saying in Washington that uh, you've heard it before, the problem is not that we tax too little, we spend too much. So the, the answer is you know, reduce the subsidies of oil and gas and collect more taxes. That really doesn't answer the question. But you asked my portion of the question about you suggested unsustainable increases in priorities, which we're dealing with. That, that is a very real issue. And how would I raise revenue? Specifically, how would I raise revenue? We've already started working. 18 months since I've been down in the nation's capital on comprehensive tax relief. We constantly hear about the need to raise marginal rates on individuals. What I think we need to do is we need to make certain millionaires and billionaires, individuals and corporations, the little monsters here in Bucks County and throughout the country, everybody, they especially need to pay their fair share. And there are millionaires and billionaires in this country who don't pay any tax because they're able to take advantage of tax loopholes, deductions, and credits that have been built into the some of their specific requests. And so if you do comprehensive tax reform, you don't have to raise the rates. You can actually just clean out all the underbrush, all the tax credits and deductions. You could probably lower the rate. As, as I'm going to suggest we do on for corporations, lower from 35 to 25, clear out the deductions, and make sure that everybody pays 25%. Nobody escapes it. Because we have right now in America the largest employer in the United States of America, GE, that pays as a Raise the rate from 35% to 45%. Raise it to 55%. They're still going to pay no tax. So we need comprehensive, clear, and concise tax reform to make sure everybody pays their fair share. And Mr. President, that answers your question. That's how you get more revenue, but without raising rates. Go for it. Sure. Uh, well, I, that's not sufficient, Congressman. And the truth is, I agree with you that we should eliminate loopholes, and I wish that the Ryan budget had actually named some of the loopholes that we would eliminate. Uh, we want to put forth specific examples about how we're going to eliminate those loopholes. But again, if you look at historically, the, the Bush tax cuts were the only, the only time in American history that we have ever gone to war and cut taxes at the same time. We're not talking about raising the rates, we're talking about putting the rates back to where they were when they put the wars on the credit card back under President Bush. We need to do this for our families. But again, I didn't just talk about the one side. Again, we can't look at this as just one way or another way. We have to look at the whole spectrum. And a lot of the problems with this broken Congress is that they're not looking at things comprehensively. They're looking at things piecemeal. And when you talk about this way, you know, this tax pledge, no tax pledge, it doesn't allow you to look at things deficit, bringing it down for our children and grandchildren so that they are not paying the bills of yesterday. Congressman? Okay. I have a brief follow-up. Uh, when I first saw this question, I thought it was perhaps frivolous, but the more we looked at it, then what the heck? Let's have some fun and ask. <laughs> There's a movement circulating on the internet, born from frustration over the inability of the House and Senate to reach agreement on a budget. It's titled, No Budget, No Pay for Congressmen. I hope you can answer this in 30 seconds or less. Is this a good idea? If so, can you commit yourself right now to supporting a mechanism in the Congress that would make the no budget, no pay concept a reality? Mrs. Bofar. Yes. <laughs> Congressman? I do appreciate it's almost like a, it's like a commercial for my candidacy because I'm a co-sponsor, the, the only co-sponsor from Pennsylvania of No Budget, No Pay. And for those of you who may not be familiar with it, I've spoken again extensively today about the importance, I think the most important obligation of any of your members, member of Congress, member of the United States Senate, when you send them to Washington, the most important obligation, the first obligation is to pass a budget. And I think it ought to balance, by the way, which is why I'm for a, a constitutional member for a balanced budget. But the No Budget, No Pay Act says if you don't pass a budget, you don't get paid. And if the budget resolution was due, say, April 30th, and you don't pass it until July 30th, but you do eventually pass it, you don't get paid retroactively either. And that is an example of not a Democrat solution or Republican solution. This is a, an American solution came from an organization called No Labels that I'm a member of in the nation's capital. Yeah, they fixed it. it should be we don't have time right. today, but I hope sometime in the future we'll explore. Okay, number four. Uh, our next question is from our Newtown campus and will be asked by Alex Richmond. 
again, if you turn your attention to the screen in the back of the room. Alex? Uh, the economy is going to be the most prominent issue in this upcoming election, but there are social issues that are important to many voters. We don't have time to discuss everything today. I will lay out several topics, and you may take your time to discuss any or all of them as concisely as possible. Uh, the first topic would be if you believe that the federal right to an abortion as established in Roe v. Wade is a settled law. Topic number two. What role, if any, does the government have in making birth control available and affordable to women? And the final topic, number three, if you believe that same-sex marriages should be a federal right that is consistent throughout the country. Thank you. Okay, so the question is, there's a menu of topics. You can choose to answer any or all of them. One is Roe v. Wade is settled law. Two, uh, does the federal government have a role to play in making birth control uh, available to, and affordable to women? And three, should same-sex marriage be a federal right consistent throughout the country? Must provide, even against their conscience. 
which shocked the conscience of people like William Penn and our founding fathers. 